Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, all the attendees, for joining us today. I am Sakshi, welcoming you all on behalf of Solar Quarter and First View Group to our webinar on design optimization with SunGrow PV inverter. As the solar industry is rapidly expanding, there is a growing demand for competent professionals with the right skills and expertise. The goal of this webinar is to provide our attendees with a fundamental outlook on setting up new projects as well as adding solar inverters to already operational projects. In this webinar, we will also navigate through the installation challenges and find out how to overcome the same. Before handing over this session to our panel speakers, I would like to take a moment to remind all our attendees to post their questions in the Q&A box and our speaker will take it up at the end of the session. I would now request my team to play the factory video. We are the first supplier to launch a uh, world's first biggest rating in terms of string inverter that is a 250 check that was giving 250 kilowatt active power. We are coming up with this uh, 10 gigawatt setup which is going to have the SMT line manufacturing. So it means all the PCBs which we are using in our inverter is going to manufacture locally. With the new factory that we have in place in Bangalore, is going to bring this concept vocal for local. This is a clean room concept with the ASD flooring. This clean room concept is used to manufacture the string inverter assembly. This string inverter assembly has got a n number of stages. Few stages will be used to assemble the inverter and another few stages will be used to quality control, production inspection and testing. This is the aging room. This aging room is used to perform the heat run test for the string inverter. Whatever we are manufacturing, 100% inverter will be tested in this chamber. Due to this, we can meet the customer OTD. OTD means on-time delivery can be met for the customer very easily. And we can deliver a very good and quality-oriented product to the customers. Sangro has done almost uh, $16 million investment in India, which clearly demonstrates that our presence in India is for long. Uh, that promotes customer confidence. Also, the leadership in India has been given with good uh, authority to take the decisions. So that is the best part in Sangro India, where the leaders enjoy to take the drive and also deliver to the customer. Dear attendees, before we begin our informative webinar today on design tech, we have another short video to play for all our attendees. So I'd request my team to play the next video.
I would like to remind all our attendees to post their questions in the chat box and our speaker will take this up at the end of the session. We'll be playing the second video shortly. For those, who are, those of us who have joined us late, I would like to give you an overview of the webinar today. As the solar industry is rapidly expanding, there's a growing demand for competent professionals with the right skills and expertise. The goal of this webinar today is to provide our attendees with a fundamental outlook on setting up new projects, as well as adding solar inverters to already operational projects. So today we will navigate through the installation challenges and see how to overcome the same. We'll be playing a factory video uh, by SunGrow now. And now, without any further ado, we would like to invite Mr. Chirag Jain, Senior Engineer, Product Applications, to take us through his company's profile and presentation. Over to you, sir. Welcome to screen. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Shakshi. And thank you, First View. So I'm just sharing my screen and start. let's start with the uh, Sangro company profile.
so hello everyone uh, my name is chirag jain and i am taking care at uh, technical in sangro uh, so today we discuss on design optimization points and uh, so let's initiate with the sangro company profile so who is sangro so let's start with the his sangro so we are the uh, world's most bankable inverter brand and uh, we have a uh, just a moment so sangro has been dedicated to conversion uh, technology of clean energy for 25 years our headquarters is based in hefei china hefei china is a technology hub with the parent opportunities of invert innovations so uh, from last three consecutive years we are 100% bankable uh, this is the source from uh, bloomberg reports taken now moving further in uh, we have established our company in 1997 and uh, from uh, there we have uh, continuously moving to the further projects and that's expansion in our business so in 2020 uh, we 2021 we are into more into the business of uh, solution of and solar energy uh, energy storage and uh, uh, robotic cleaning solutions so now i'm talking about the businesses so we are into multiple business which we are doing globally so these are the multiple business we are do, uh, doing at a global basis and for india we are into the pv inverters energy storage converters and systems floating pv systems and intelligent pv cleaning robots in the name of sunpure so moving further uh, sangro is more into the innovation and research part so uh, to uh, to solve the new challenges which is coming to the renewable sectors also out of 100% of our company we have a 40% team in research field uh, and uh, which is the backbone of our company so we are uh, in the into the 40% into the r&d stuff and uh, uh, 20% in sales and 27% in manufacturing and 13% in the management roles so this is the uh, part of innovation research and innovation we take in our factories now talking about the uh, world uh, world largest inverter factory so we have 145 gigawatt per year global production capacities uh, if we talk about china factory so we have 120 gigawatt per year productions and in india we have 20 gigawatt factory per year also uh, along with that uh, ess we have 6 gigawatt hour 6 gigawatt 6 gigawatt hour talking about the sangro india journey so from 2014 we have initiated uh, into the indian market and uh, for a, we have initiated a 5 megawatt project at apatla in 2015 first batch of central inverters installed in india at a pokhran locations in rajasthan uh, in 2017 we have crossed 1 gigawatt shipment in india and in 2018 we have set up our 3 gigawatt local manufacturing unit near to the bangalore in 2019 we have start export of made in india inverters to global market as well in 2020 we achieved 5 gigawatt pv inverter shipments in india now talking about in 2021 so we achieved 11 gigawatt plus total shipments and expand and expand our local manufacturing capacity from 3 gigawatt to 10 gigawatt annual capacity in india now moving further to 2022 so we have now achieved 14 gigawatt plus total shipments in india so these are the journey of sangro now talking about the rankings and uh, some uh, uh, some uh, uh, innovation uh, certifications we received in q2 2022 we received a leading inverter supply of 20% 28% market share uh, sourced from the jnk so these are the various uh, uh, where we having a approaches and we have a higher market shares in the industry in the to the renewables so this is the uh, uh, sangro sangro largest in you know, inverter factory so sangro built manufacturing base in india to meet the global uh, blooming demands sangro has the world largest factory and the global annual production capacity of 145 gigawatt uh, specifically speaking the production capacity for china factory will be 120 gigawatt per hour per year india factory possesses the capacity of 10 gigawatt per year beside the storage segment the production capacity of ess is 6 gigawatt slash 6 gigawatt per year 
so the manufacturing base is getting uh, more and more uh, digital and intelligent which will uh, largely increase the uh, produ production efficiency so we have our 10 gigawatt factory uh, per year production capacity in bangalore at neelmangala now talking about the service network so we are uh, if we talk about the in india so we have a wide uh, area of service network we have uh, enrolled our team with the 35 plus local service teams and we have a uh, more than 10 plus warehouses and repair centers in india as well so uh, the service is our backbone for the india market so we are targeting that service sector will be more stronger in future as well to address all the uh, problems faced by the clients now talking about the sangro factory uh, product family overview so sangro uh, can provide both central and string inverter uh, for different kind of applications if we talk about the utility scale pv plants sangro supply 1500 volt dc uh, central inverters and we have a wide range of uh, inverters from 1 one plus x to up, uh, up to 8.8 .8, uh, megawatt inverters so in this we have sg5000 ud-20 that is a 5 megawatt inverter and sg33 and slash 4400 is a modular design inverter which comes with the 1 plus x modular design and sg3125-31 uh, and 32 is the uh, again central inverter 1500 volt dc and uh, AC output voltage is somewhere around 663. So this is the central inverter which, in which we have a utility scale addressing the, all the scenarios. Now moving to the uh, utility string inverter. So in 1500 volt DC, we have a HD320HX inverter, uh, which is having a, a 1500 volt DC and AC output voltage is 800 volt DC. Now moving to the commercial and industrial segment, we have a string inverter at 1100 volt system. So in the string inverter, we have SG125 CXP2, 33 CXP2 and 50 CXP2 as a series. These string inverter are used to adopt various scenario of uh, different capacities, uh, talking in the terms of the uh, CNDI segments. Now moving to the residential segment. So in residential segment, we have 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 uh, kilowatt inverters in the three phase range. And uh, this is a very uh, wide range in the residential network uh, market as well. So we can cater uh, different kind of applications and scenario with these kind of uh, inverter ratings in terms of utility scales, e and i and residential. Now moving to the further monitoring solutions. So in monitoring solutions, we have a complete monitoring solution range for a different applications, uh, which include IM for INET as and wireless dongles as a and common DS and EMU 200 as a communication device. So I solar cloud is a where we where we can check all the inverter parameters at remote basis. And we have a, a web app application also for a mobile user. So uh, we can uh, check the data at mobile level also for monitoring the system. Now talking about the ESS product. So in ESS also we are having a uh, PCS and batteries for India. We are providing a complete solution like uh, battery bags and uh, battery bags and PCS along with the complete solutions. So batteries and PCS we are providing. So these are the batteries also. So we are dealing with the LFP batteries, uh, and uh, we have a monitoring system also for EMS, local controller, insights, and ISO clouds where we can check the local parameters of the uh, uh, PCS and batteries. So these are the few certifications which we received uh, from various agencies like uh, uh, Maharashtra uh, Solar Quarters as well, Maharashtra State Annual Solar Awards. So these are the awards and certifications which we got for the uh, innovations. And these are the uh, employee uh, engagement activity at Sangro, which we done during the COVID period. That, that is what the very tough time which we have faced. Uh, in uh, in our time, so at that moment also we are in complete operations and our team is completely doing work uh, work from home at that moment also, so not to hamper the uh, situations. And uh, as a Sangro, we provide we are doing CSR activity plantation drive also, so we have a uh, CSR activities uh, in there uh, to hold the uh, uh, clean and clean power solution. So we use the CSR activity as well. These are the some reputed clients of Sangro. So these, these are the uh, thank you. So now the uh, company profile is completely end. So moving further to the main topic, 
which is a design optimization with sangro view inverter so let's initiate with the uh, content so first we discuss on product family overview scope of supply third installation area selection and preparation fourth cable specification fifth inverter features sixth bus selection seventh monitoring solution eighth zero export and ninth we talk about the references so let's initiate with the product family overview so this is the same thing which i told in the previous slides also so these are the wide range of inverters we have for the utility cni and residential segments uh, for monitoring we have uh, various devices uh, for the monitoring solutions now come to the uh, let's now moving on to the scope of supply with the inverters so as we in the scope of supply along with the inverters uh, we uh, mounting bracket ac dc connectors fastening screws comes with the scope of supply also it includes a uh, document quick installation guide uh, and packing list warranty documents with com uh, complete scope of supply so uh, each inverter comes with a scope of supply that is a different so for that uh, we can refer the user manual for the actual scope of supply which comes to uh, with the inverter particular specific model number so we can refer uh, user manual for the scope of supply so so now as you come to know about what comes with an inverter now moving to the installation area and selection preparation so talking about the installation area selection preparation uh, first we discuss on local requirement location requirement so location is a uh, plays a very important role to optimum optimal lock mounting location to be selected for safe operation uses and uh, for electrical connections and operations so we have to take care that we can easily accessible and uh, uh, we can uh, check uh, we can uh, work easily for the onm prospects and maintenance kind of thing can be carried out so we have to check that uh, proper maintenance uh, proper uh, location will be suitable for the inverter mounting location to be selected for easy operation purpose now moving to the installation environment requirements so uh, talking about the installation requirement we have to take care for the following things like frame uh, the environment installation environment is free of inflammable or explosive material location should not be accessible to the children and uh, do not install the inverter at out outdoor at high chemical activities areas where uh, climatic is very high conditions third we have to uh, pro prevent the inverter from direct exposure, exposure to sun rain is no so these are the kind of uh, installation we have to uh, taking care into the our requirements so while considering the location environment uh, uh, environment moving to the further so next to uh, we have to check the structure wall requirements so moving to further uh, structure and wall should made of non inflammable material so we have to check that uh, wall where we installing that is made up of non inflammable material second uh, we have to check the load bearing capacity of that wall also so that load bearing capacity of that wall should be higher than four times weight of the inverter weight so these are the basic requirement for the installation area selection or if we talk about the angle requirement so we always recommend that vertical inverter installation should be recommended and uh, forward and upside down that is not <laughs> not installation is recommended now moving to the clearance requirement so each and every inverter has a different kind of design so we have to refer the user manual for that installation and clearances so uh, to ensure that uh, sufficient his dissipation should be taken carried out uh, for the proper uh, uh, proper clearances so we have to ensure that uh, from the user manual uh, we can check these all these kind of things like uh, clearances for the inverter to inverter and if we doing multiple inverter installation so we can check from here from the user manual how we can go with the uh, reserve specific clearances to uh, easier the ondm prospects and uh, uh, to ensure heat sufficient is heat dissipation in case of back to back installation so minimum clearances will be required that is say 600 mm for the back to back installations now talking about the cable sizes specification inverter wise so uh, let's talk about the 110 25cxp2 this is a our new uh, model uh, uh, for the uh, cndi segment that is a 125cxp2 and for the dc cable we recommend 4 to 6 square mm cable 
Uh, and if, if I talk about the IC cables, I just saw we can, uh, we can the uh, 70 to 40 square mm is, uh, can be selected for the cable. And if I talk about the grounding cables also, so PE cable should be selected based on the uh, S by two, uh, where S is the phase wire cross section. So we have to check S by two as a, uh, for the PE cables, I guess. And if we talk about the communication cable, so uh, the shield registered pair cable is recommended for the communication cables. Now moving to the 3350 CXP2, this is also a new launch inverter. So uh, with the talking about the DC cables also 4 to 6 square mm is recommended. AC cable for 33 CX is 16 to 35 and for 50 CXP2 is 35 to 50. And see the PE cable size should be uh, again same uh, as by two of the phase of the conductor. So coming and communication is cable is always, always uh, we recommend shield tested pair cable. So, you can check these all these details with the user member or help for the installation. Now talking about the inverter features. So uh, 30 uh, inverter features like uh, if, uh, high efficiency. So we have switch uh, two level topologies to three level topologies to achieve this high efficiency. Nowadays the inverter comes with uh, more than 98% uh, efficiency in terms of and also it's having a multi MPPT benefit. So it helps in reducing our mismatch losses because of the multiple MPPT, we can able to reduce the mismatch losses. These inverters also support bifacial PV module uh, with a 15 ampere per, uh, per input. Support two strings, one input saving DC cable cost. So we will discuss this on our upcoming slides. Uh, PID recovery at night to increase the yield. So this is also the same thing. So uh, as we all know that PID recovery is very important. So whatever the PID effect happened during a daytime, so to overcome that PID effect uh, during a night time, so we have a PID recovery function with the central with the string inverters. Q at night. So Q at night is used to supply reactive power to the grid at a night time, and it requires uninterrupted power supply from the grid. So this is a Q at night. We can feed the reactive power from the inverter as well so without using any such kind of uh, capacitor and capacitor banks. Capacitor banks. Uh, so the uh, our inverter comes with IP66 protection and C5 anti corrosion category. So this we also we will discuss in detail in our upcoming slide. I have string detection and awake scanning is again uh, optional kind of thing. So proactive fault diagnosis. Now talking about the main technical parameters for SG33CXP2 and 50CXP2 in maximum input voltage is 1100 volt. Maximum input per uh, uh, maximum input per string is 15 ampere and short circuit current is 20 ampere. So again, we can able to connect uh, uh, high high watt peak modules with these kind of inverters. And uh, number of MPPTs will vary based on the number of uh, rated inverters capacity. So 33CX having now three number of MPPTs. 50 having a four, four numbers and 125 is having 10 number of MPPTs. So, uh, MPPT VLT range also vary 160 to 1000 volt and 425 it's a 180 to uh, 1000 volt. Rated capacity is a 400 volt. Uh, output power is uh, 33 kilowatt, 50 and 125 kilowatts. Efficiency is higher again 98 more than the 98 percent. So degree of protection is IP66 and C5 anti corrosion category. Moving to further. So design of single and multiple communication solutions. So this is the, uh, with the single inverter communication, we use a Wi-Fi device. Uh, with the multiple inverter communication, we have a COM 100D as a device. So we can use zero export with that also, COM 100D. It support up to 30 number of inverters for the communication purpose. So uh, uh, with the, uh, also with this COM 100D, we can install a zero export device for limiting the power or uh, to, uh, to limit the power fading towards the grid. So we start with the DC paralleling option. So by paralleling two strings in, uh, using a Y connector, we can make it one string and connect directly to one MPPT. Also, we can connect three strings on one MPPT using a low uh, watt peak module that is 300 or 335. Uh, connecting by doing a two strings in parallel via Y, y connector and one string directly to one MPPT. So we having a two inputs, so we can connect two inputs with the uh, with one Y connectors and with single string directly. But in this, we have a recommendation that you have to use inline fuses based on the short circuit rating, and it it will be uh, 
you can check with the module manufacturer for that uh, fuse rating also. Also, this uh, considering the cumulative short circuit of string will not cross the MPPT short circuit while we doing such kind of uh, parallel activity, activities with the uh, per MPPTs. So we uh, by doing a paralleling, uh, we can save on uh, DC cables. Uh, we have to do less maintenance. So we can also we can achieve uh, can able to achieve our DC overloading ratio. It increase our uh, yield also in generations. So these uh, this parallel uh, is uh, uh, complied by as per IEC six two one zero nine and NEC six nine zero point nine standards. So we can do the parallel by connecting a wire connector to a string one input at one input. Are talking about the integrated PID recovery function. So, as we all know that in central inverters, we can overcome uh, the PID effect by doing a negative grounding, right? But in string inverter, it is not feasible because of the uh, it is not possible to do uh, negative grounding because of the multiple amplitudes. So, in order to overcome that PID effect, happen in the modules. So, we have provided a PID recovery function which will work during a non-generating hours to recover whatever the PID effect happened during the night time, during the daytime. So this is the, uh, we have done a one study also that in 5.5 megawatt project in Shenzhen, after the 42 hours of PID uh, repair. So all the parameters come to the actual 100% uh, values. So in this, you can see here, as check when we, do, we module week after weekend condition. So we are receiving the Pmax of 228. After PID recovery, we are getting repair up to 248. So this is why the PID effect is important, PID recovery function. So we can recover our PID effect from these kind of applications. C520 corrosion category. So the, our inverter is tested with the C5 anti corrosion category. For reference, the test report is uh, attached. Also, we have installed one plant in Japan in 2017, which is 3 me 50 meter far away from the sea, high temperature, high humidity, high pollutant, and high salinity area. We can we check that our inverter is working safe and reliable under these conditions. So again, this is an add-on advantage with the C5 anti corrosion category for the customers also. So they can install our inverters at the high, harsh environmental conditions also. So this is again a key on advantages which comes with this our inverter C5 and decorative category. Now talking about the IP66 protection and degree. So to prevent inverter IP66, all the key components are encapsulated in an electronic cavity uh, separated from the heat sink. As you can see here is the green board is the electronic uh, compartments where we install all the electronic components like PCB and board of the inverter is completely packed from the both side. So uh, to maintain the inverter as a IP66 protected. At the end, we have installed heat sinks and fans uh, for the heat dissipation of the inverter. Also our fans which uh, comes with uh, high uh, with the IP68 fans and uh, intelligent air cooling function. So this is again a clear advantage. Now talking about the intelligent air cooling function. So our inverter has a smart forced air cooling which has been increasing the life of the inverter. As we can see here, uh, it takes a cold air from the bottom of the inverter and take out the hot air from the uh, side of the uh, inverters. And uh, to uh, also the fan which we have used can having a smart fan. So we can vary, uh, these fan can vary the speed based on the ambient temperature inside the uh, uh, inverter. So, so we have to, we have from this, we can able to reduce our auxiliary uh, consumption as well. So throughout the day, if we check the so auxiliary consumption will also become low by using a smart fan. Now talking about the IP68 fans. So these fans are by default comes with the IP68 protected. It means it can work in the harsh environment conditions. As we can see in here in figure also, that the coil and the PCP are completely uh, sealed in order to maintain the IP68 rating of fans. Also in, in case there is any issue with the fan, we can replace this fan within a one minute time. So we having a, these uh, as a slide and slab design. So we can keep easy to, to replace and we can do the quick replacement with these fans also. Also what the product which we have used that is the best quality product in the inverter to serve our longer service life of 25 years. So 
we have uh, considered design considering the design life of the our product up to 25 years we have considered that the best quality product with our inverters now talking about the lower editions ultra lower editions so as we see here uh, all the electronic equipment having uh, some kind of radiation level so we have tested these inverters and we have designed these inverter considering the radiation level of home appliances and we found that these inverter are much safe to install in uh, industrial and applications so as we see here also this uh, we can install these inverter in residential and commercial so radiation level radiation uh, values also play a very important role so these uh, we have tested our inverters and we found that the radiation level is very low as compared to the home and uh, residential applications scenarios so talking about the greater reactive power support so in our inverter will, our inverter will support grid in terms of power factor uh, so it support point 8 leading to lagging power factor it, that means that this inverter can support to feed in reactive power up to 60% of inverter rated capacity so again we can feed uh, reactive power if any requirement from the grid size or uh, plant level so we can feed uh, reactive power from our inverter with the curtailment of active power uh, so again we have not to require that such kind of heavy capacitor banks so to reducing that cost we can use this feature with our inverters 0.5 accurate string detection so this is an online iv curve scanning which is used to check the healthiness of the string and it's also help us to reducing the oindum time to make the plant healthy and forever to save the oindum time also this is the pattern we have a multiple pattern algorithm so uh, to check the iv curve scanning this is an optional features uh, if any customer required then they have to inform prior to us to before before these discussions now talking about the bios selection so in bios selection so bios plays a very important role uh, to achieve the lcov to levelize the cost of electricity for solar pv plant selection of bios will be based on the following approaches like systematic and analytical approach quality and reliability and comply with the requisites standards so while we uh, selecting the bios uh, with for our inverters or project specific so bios plays a very important role to uh, achieve that our project cost levelizing so again this is like uh, we have to uh, we can use this following approaches to uh, to check the quality of that bios quality and reliability of that bios system that that bios can comply with the requisites standards or not so these kind of approach we can follow to, uh, during a selection of bios uh now talking about the bios selection as per the inverter size so we can we discuss on breaker selection spd uh, cable selection transformer selection so talking about the breaker selection so selection of breaker uh, should be done based on the inverter maximum output current at any point of temperature so while selecting a breaker so we have to ensure that inverter maximum uh, chosen uh, breaker selection should be chosen based on the inverter maximum output current at any point of temperature so according to that we have to select the breaker second we have to consider the sufficient uh, design factor for the uh, heat dissipation in the lt panels like if we uh, using a lt panel and uh, the temperature rises ambient temperature and derating capability of that mccb we have to select To, uh, we have to check with the mccb so uh, we have to take sufficient design factor while uh, designing with the lt panels and for the such conditions third we have to select a ka rating selection of the mccb based on the inverter duty transformers if you are procuring a dedicated transformer for pv then make sure that the impedance value should be as per the iec 6 6 0076-55 so the uh, short circuit that is a ka rating will be based on the impedance value so we can select from the iec 60076-5 also as per the nec code the maximum loading of any circuit breaker should be 80% of the rating and mccb temperature derating factors are to be considered according with the mccb manufacturer's recommendation site conditions lt panel manufacturers or lt panel thermal design based now moving to the like uh, selection of the breaker for 125 cxp2 that is a 400 rated voltage so recommended that rated breaker will be a 25 ampere 
uh, 50 CX we do, that is a 125 and 33 with 33, we have recommended backup of 20 amperes. So these are the few recommendations from our side uh, for the uh, inverter break, uh, selection breakers. Now talking on the SPD requirement. So for why selecting a XP, SPD, that is where we are talking about the external SPDs. So external SPDs provides a, uh, SPD provide a protection against electrical surges and spikes, including uh, those caused directly or indirectly by lightning. So external SPDs is also a, a very important part of the uh, plan to protect the equipment from the surges, indirect surges, or direct surges. So while selecting an SPD, they can be uh, uh, they can be utilized as a component devices or as a component within electrical equipments. A photovoltaic system converts a lot of energy into direct sun, uh, current electricity. So we have a basic recommendation on the SPDs that like a SPD connection should having a shorter part towards the ground to bypass the surges. And we have to select the uh, nearby like uh, uh, shorter part. We have to uh, check the shorter path to so we can uh, bypass the searches uh, on media distance. Now, cable talking about the cable specific uh, selection. So, for 125 CXP2, DC cable is 4 to 6 square mm, and uh, AC cable is uh, like uh, 72 to 40 square mm. Also, while selecting the cable or sizing the cable, uh, following we have to consider the following factors like we have to consider output insulation voltage in each and every inverter cases. Like if I talk about 800 voltage, there we have a recommendation on 1.9 slash 3.3. So this is why we are uh, we, we have to check the following factors for while selecting the cables, like output insulation voltage, site ambient condition, ampacity, durations, voltage drops, and power losses, group derating factors, and cable laying factors. So these are the factors we, which we can uh, consider during the selection of the cables. This is the same thing which we have discussed earlier also for the cable selection of 3356. Now talking about the transformer selection, like uh, while we installing the bigger size plant or utility scale plants, we have to uh, design the transformer uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, design the transformer. So we for the design of the inverter duty transformer, every customer can ask for inverter duty transformer recommended document. Uh, from the inverter manufacturer for IDT design. So we, uh, as a Sangro, we provide also provide while design, you are doing a plant of uh, in such a megawatt scales or a, a, at a, a ground level or utility scale projects, we provide a transformer recommendation document. So this is the again uh, thing which uh, for that inverter uh, we provide duty recommendations. Also, we uh, have to uh, consider following measures should be requirement like transformer loading pattern. So transformer loading pattern should be uh, made the typical periodical load of photovoltaic system. So based on that, we have to select the transformer loading of the uh, uh, pattern. Second, we have to select the transformer KVA capacity. So the based on the maximum uh, inverter duty uh, inverter, we have to select the uh, maximum AC power for paralleling the inverters also. So we have to select the transformer KVA capacity. Third, we have to check the, that the transformer which we are designing that meet the grid, local grid codes of that country or not. So we have to consider the grid code requirement as well. Fourth, we talk about the line voltages. So uh, line voltage we have to check like uh, we, uh, for the LV side and higher voltage side. So we for the line voltages, uh, we, transformer shall be constant with the grid voltage grade of installation sites. So we have to uh, check that uh, recommended to the select transformer with the tap switch on the high voltage side. So these are the some uh, references or we can say like uh, requirements to meet with the transformer. Next, moving to the impedance voltage also. So while selecting a transformer, uh, we have to select the impedance of the transformer also. So we have a IC60076-1 for the transformer recommendation uh, for the impedance uh, selection. So we can check from the ICs also for the transformer or impedance values. Design consideration. So uh, we have to consider the voltage drop shall not be greater than 3% and DC component of the transformer can withstand 1% of the base wave current at the rated power. So these are the some design considerations. Number of LV winding protection consideration, side weather consideration. So during designing a transformer, we have to consider the follow vectors and you can ask an inverter duty transformer recommendation document as well from the inverter manufacturers also. 
now talking about the monitoring solution like if we want to do a single inverter communication we have a wi-fi sticks and uh, we can uh, uh, take these data to the isola cloud uh, where we can check on the remote basis it's a web based server isola cloud or we have a, also a mobile based application in the name of isola cloud for the both android and iphone users now talking about the multiple communication like if we talk about the 28 numbers of inverters so we can communicate with uh, com and d we can use as a com and d for the communication purpose so we can uh, communicate multiple inverters with this com and d as a device now talking about the zero export so in zero export we have a two kind of solution so first we talk about the rt series zero export solution so we uh, for single inverter zero export solution we have a dtsu 666 model as a uh, in that zero export we have a inbuilt ct and is it, it is only used for the single inverter communication that is with the rt series up to 10 20 kilowatt max or if we talk about the upper size inverter we have a dtsu 1352-c model uh, with the three phase energy meter so uh, this is the zero export device uh, which we can be used for the limiting the power to feed towards the grid so this zero export meter requires a external ct which is uh, has to be uh, designed based on the output load of maximum output load where all the loads are captured with the grid at the lv side so we have to check that uh, based on that we have to select the cities and the recommendation on cities is the class 0.5s accuracy now moving to the reference point so in references we have a uh, with the efforts of dedicated sangro staff uh, inverter installed more than 275 gigawatt plus and our product are installed in over 150 plus countries with our 20 subsidiaries and over 260 plus service outlets also sangro is willing to reach out to you immediately when you are in demand we provide 24 hours in 7 days service and local warehouses which uh, could perfectly address your different kind of issues in india also we have cross 14 gigawatt plus shipments and we have a 10 gigawatt factory setup in our uh, bangalore facility in bangalore Uh, these are some references uh, which we have installed at different climatic conditions, different temperature zones, or weak grid support kind of application. So these are the few references. In Lima, we have installed 3.9 megawatt, or uh, Delhi 2.9, 9.2. And thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you so much, sir. for that insightful presentation we will now be uh, screening some questions from our attendees here and so you can uh, answer them so if you have any doubt or a queries you can ask with us yes sir uh, are the questions uh, visible to you sir or shall i read them out maybe few of the questions is uh, answered is given by my team so if any pending questions we can discuss no issue sure sir um uh... so one of the attendees here wants to know uh, do the inverters have ability to follow reactive uh, power demand that is uh, it does not require us to apply fixed pf uh sir mr chirag any of the questions you would like to answer later we can do that and uh, send your answer to our attendees sure sure ma'am okay so for the reactive power composition so we have a two kind of modes uh, one is qt and uh, one is qe so by uh, we can feed uh, we can able to feed a uh, reactive power from our inverters as well so uh, if if we want a fixed reactive power so we can set a fixed reactive power requirement from an inverter to feed the continuous the same amount of reactive power to the grid or if we want to set a uh, some power factor range so we can set the power factor range as well with the inverter 
so we the inverter based on the uh, capacity uh, generating inverter generating capacity so based on that inverter feed can able to feed the reactive power as per the load as per the uh, set at power factor okay sir uh, somebody also wants to know that uh, uh, is there any mobile application to monitor the solar plants yes so we have a, a i solar cloud mobile based application that is available for both the users android and iphone users so they can uh, download uh, from the play store or that app store of, uh, in the name of i solar cloud right sir uh, mr himanshu wants to know what should be the recommended rcd rating for 125 kilowatt inverter Pardon? Can you repeat once uh, again? Yeah, I'll repeat that. Uh, Mr. Himanshu wants to know what should be the recommended RCD rating for 125 kilowatt inverter. Uh, uh, okay. So the recommended RCD will be maintained as per the IC 6001 standard requirements. We are recommending the RCD value as per the IC 62109 standard. So based on that, they will select. Uh, RCD ready. Okay, sir. And uh, Mr. Rohit wants to know if there is a conf configuration for PV plus diesel generator hybrid solution. So uh, our inverter will generate the AC power. Right. The synchronization part is uh, with, will, we can't confirm because it's a third party integration they have to do. So they have to provide uh, some uh, uh, protection relays and such kind of applications with for the synchronization purpose so we don't have any recommendation on the synchronization we only uh, we answer our questions for the inverter related queries okay sure sir uh we'll uh, be answering the rest of the questions uh to our attendees later since we are short of time uh for now we'll uh, we'll be uh thanking everyone for investing their valuable time and support for the event. And uh, we promise to be back with more exciting sessions. And thank you so much uh, for that insightful presentations, Mr. Jain. Uh, and uh, everybody have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir.